Hello and welcome to Alton Park, the Cheshire Circuit, this weekend hosting rounds 12 and 13 of the Master MX-5 Super Cup. The first race of the day is about to get underway, but first let's take a look at how the championship standings look. Alan Henderson has a 40-point lead over a fantastic three-way fight for second, though. JJ Clements, Simon Goddard and Liam Murphy covered by just three points, and that is where I think most of the attention is going to be directed over the remaining rounds this year. Here's how the grid looks. Henderson has the pole from James Blake Baldwin alongside. John Davies, Simon Goddard, row two. Then it's Anthony Neald, Liam Murphy. Murphy, Charlie Charm and Gary Townsend, James Aspinall and Jack Harding with a new engine in the car rounds out the top 10. JJ Clements is 11th. The asterisk next to his uh, name means he has a four-place grid penalty, the same for all of the drivers with an asterisk next to them as a result of the safety car infringement last time out at Cadwell Park. We also welcome Will Picken to the championship, making his Super Cup debut. On board this weekend with John Davies, car number 33 up towards the sharp end of the field, and John Greensmith down in 15th place after dramas in qualifying uh, and a grid penalty as well. Uh, and he'll be one definitely to look out for moving his way forward here at his home event. So the green flag waved at the back. We're about to go racing. And Alan Henson alongside James Blake Baldwin in a new car. That's the car Chris Dawkins drove last time out at Cadwell Park. And he's got it on the front row. Away we go then. Who made the best start? It looks like it's Henderson. Good start from John Davies as well in the silver car on the inside. Simon Goddard goes to the outside of James Blake Baldwin. But the reigning Mark 1 champion holds his own. Hangs on to second place. There you see JJ Clements going around the outside. Lots of cars out wide. Clements. How on earth did he save that car then? He was heading straight back into the middle of the pack. And somehow, JJ got control of the vehicle and continued on his way. John Davies, after a good start, has actually dropped down to fourth place, though. Look behind Simon Goddard. We're on board with John now in the slipstream down the lakeside straight. This is a very, very high-speed left-hand corner at the end of it. Island Ben, one of the few really quick left-handers in the country. That is Anthony Neal. Then Liam Murphy with Charlie Charmer making a good show here. But Charmer's on the grass. He's out wide off at Island, and surely he's going to make the barriers. Oh, yes, he does quite heavily. Charlie Charmer, unfortunately, that is almost certainly a race-ending shunt, and uh, that is a real shame a car that he got hold of uh, for the last round at Cadwell Park. This is only the second meeting for that car and already he's had a very sizable shunt. Meanwhile, the racing continues. That's James Aspinall with John Greensmith trying to recover from that four-place grid penalty that he suffered after Cadwell Park. The leading two, though, are getting away. Look, Henderson with Blake Baldwin. It's all going on for third place. They're three abreast down towards the chicane. Look, you've got uh, Liam Murphy on the inside, John Davies in the middle, and Anthony Neald in the silver and green Paul Sheard car trying to go around the outside. It settles out with Davies fourth, Neald fifth, and Murphy sixth with Clements and Harding in behind them. Then it's James Aspinall, John Greensmith, and that looks like Gary Townsend as well uh, in the yellow car bringing up the uh, uh, the rear of that little group. Everybody out through Nickerbrook. There is Charlie Charman. Good to see that he's getting out of the car unaided but unfortunately the car is looking rather second hand on board with John Davies we're in fourth place going through the very very quick double apex right hander at Drew's the road falls away from you on the exit but he's had a good run out of there carries good speed down towards Lodge and this is one of the best overtaking opportunities on the circuit he's signalling his intent look goes to the inside of Simon Goddard and through he goes so John Davies goes third but runs out wide Goddard tries to get the switch back manoeuvre they'll be side by side up and over Deer's lead no not quite I think Davies should hang on and of course Goddard has to watch out because Anthony Neal is right there with him and Liam Murphy and Jack Harding some of the real front runners in the championship all getting involved in this terrific squabble for third place and Neil goes right around the outside of Goddard out onto the grass Murphy follows him as well got to be careful around here the Alton Park circuit particularly stringent with their track limits enforcement and uh, you've got to be careful to keep all four wheels on the black stuff at all times otherwise you'll find yourself getting time penalties out of Cascades, down the lake size trades again. This group haven't really settled down since the drop of the green flag, have they? It's allowed the top two to really pull away. Davies is third now, Neil fourth, Goddard fifth, Murphy is there in sixth in the blue car, but around the outside of him comes JJ Clements. That'll work if he can keep the inside for Shell, but he can't do it. There were also yellow flags out there at Island Bend because of Charlie Charman's stricken car. Out through the banked right hander at Shell around towards the Britain chicane, one of two chicanes here on the Alton Park International Circuit, a real driver's favourite circuit. You can see why it's high speed, it's technical, it's demanding. It's a real, real challenge to get around here. And uh, everyone's just about managing it at the moment and managing to provide some very, very close quarters racing as well. Henderson still leads the way from Blake Baldwin second grade. See James Blake Baldwin right at the sharp end in the championship. As I said, he's had all sorts of mechanical dramas with his old car this year. He's now gone over to that car that Chris Dawkins has made, and it's running very, very well. And as long as it doesn't break down and he doesn't suffer any mechanical dramas, then he should continue to be a front runner throughout the rest of the season. Back on board with John Davies then, the number 33 machine, up and over Clay Hill into Druid's corner. And Anthony Neald goes on the inside and loses it. Anthony Neald, 
That was a very ambitious manoeuvre. He tried to get to the inside of John Davies into Druids, and you don't see many overtakes into that right-hander. Got two wheels on the grass, and unfortunately from that point on, Anthony was a passenger. He's going to just about manage to drag his way through the gravel trap and back out onto the track. But Anthony, who had a big scary moment, remember, at Cadwell Park last time out whilst dicing for the lead, just had another one then going into Druid. He's rejoined right at the back of the field, and over the remaining 15 and three-quarter minutes, he will be desperately trying to move his way back through the order. Davies has now escaped, therefore, in third place. Goddard is leading the train of cars to fourth. It's Goddard, Murphy, JJ Clements again sideways. Then Jack Harding, John Greensmith, and James Aspinall is now trying to join in the fun too. So this is getting on for a six-car fight now for fourth place on board with John Greensmith. Very relaxed driving style, uh, John has. He often only has one hand on the steering wheel, preferring to leave his left hand on the gear stick. Has to correct a big, big uh, oversteer moment on the extra cascades. He's weaving backwards and forwards to try and find a way past Jack Harding, who takes a defensive line into Ireland Bend. So too does Simon Goddard, because he's got Liam Murphy clambering all over his boot lid. He goes to the inside into Shell. Has Murphy gone through? Yes, he has. Great move. There was just about enough room on the inside line then for him to slip through. And that's now fourth place for Liam. He's now going to try and bridge the gap to John Davies. That's going to be easier said than done. But if this route works together, they could go after the third place man. And then that would uh, mean this is no longer a fight for fourth, but actually a fight for a podium position as well. Goddard gets sideways, Clements takes to the grass again, and Jack Harding thinks, right, where do I go to try and pick up another position? He's tucked into the slipstream again over Hilltop. Clements is going to have to defend, which he does, but he's also trying to attack Simon Goddard as well, and this is a very tricky situation to be in, when you're trying to attack and defend at the same time. It's uh, very easy to end up opening the door up inadvertently and allowing the car behind you to go through. This scrapping is allowing Murphy, though, to pull away, at least from this group. So if he's going to catch John Davies, it will be on his own, rather than working together as a group, by the looks of it. If he can break the toe, he may just be able to get his head down and put in some quick laps. He qualified sixth place, so he's on the pace this weekend. Simon Goddard with a very tight line out of Druids there and immediately goes defensive. He clearly doesn't seem to have the pace in this race. He's having to uh, watch his mirrors quite a lot just to keep this chasing pack behind. He's already dropped down to fourth place. You can see a bit of damage to the rear left corner as well. Legacy of some contact in the early going. And the racing is still just as close now as it was when the race started. Here we go to complete lap three. And up towards the right-hander at Old Hall Corner. Very easy to turn in too early to Old Hall as well because you don't want to leave the door open and JJ Clements gets into the back of Simon Goddard this time going through the corner that stacks the whole group up and Greensmith tries to take advantage gets himself along Jack Harding he's on the wrong side of the road though into Cascades Harding carries it in late on the brakes hangs on to the position but that was getting a bit robust then Simon Goddard just does not seem to have the pace here at Alton Park he's a bit of a cork in the bottle. Greensmith's got up alongside Jack Harding now, though, into uh, Island Bend. He's going to try and hold the inside line. That should work, and he moves through up another position. Meanwhile, out in front, James Blake Baldwin has taken the lead of the race away from Alan Henderson, so Alan hadn't been able to escape from James, and James now has moved through to the front. Now, is that because he feels he can pull away and make this a bit more of a commanding lead, or was just the fact that the, the opportunity presented itself and he had to take it. You don't get many opportunities to pass Alan Henderson, so when one comes along, you really have to grab it with both hands. So number three car moves through to the head of the field. Then James Blake Baldwin, this may well be the first time he's really led a race this year. He was up at the front at uh, Castle Coombe, I remember, earlier on in the year, but he's yet to really show the performance we expected from him. As I said, he was the reigning Mark 1 champion. This is how he did it. Oh, he got to the inside into Cascades. Good move, that. Committed around the outside through Dentons. Got the inside into the left-hander and moved through into the lead of the race. Now then, what can Henderson do about him? Can he find a way back through? James Blake Baldwin a bit squirrely on the extra druids there. He knows he lost momentum, has to go defensive into Lodge. Henderson goes to the outside now. He'll try and take the wide line in, cut back to the late apex and maybe carry more speed out of the corner and up and over the start-finish line. He did carry a bit more speed. He's going to try and get alongside. But again, James Blake Baldwin surely will defend the inside. He does. And as they come across the line, they're virtually touching up towards Old Hall Corner. Again, inside Blake Baldwin, outside Alan Henderson. Watch for the switchback manoeuvre on the run down the avenue. That's perfectly done by Alan Henderson. Gets himself alongside. They'll be side by side for the second consecutive lap over the brow of the hill at Denton's. But for the second consecutive lap, it's James Blake Baldwin on the inside line who holds on to the race lead. 
Henderson is trying everything he can to find a way through. And whilst he's forcing Blake Baldwin to defend, it is opening the door for these switchback manoeuvres. He now, though, tries to get to the inside into Island Bend. Oh, no, that didn't quite work. He thought he might have been able to get an overlap there, but then thought better of it. You can't really run side by side through that corner without it ending in a shunt. Hard on the brakes now, down through the gears into Shell. And again, you can see the wide, sweeping lines from Alan Henderson. We've often commented this year on how silky smooth his driving style is. And that's all part of it. And that means he's certainly a tough car to get past. But he's certainly also a tough driver to have in your mirrors because he is capable of working those wide, sweeping lines to find a way through. Again, tucks into the slipstream over Hilltop. Marshall's watching on as Alan Henderson attacks for the lead yet again. He's drawn alongside, but it's on the wrong side of the road, really. The outside line into the Hislop chicane. And JJ, uh, sorry, uh, James Blake Baldwin hangs on again through his lops into the right-hander at Nickerbrook over the crest of the hill car goes light drifts out to the edge of the track and Henderson gets a bit of a twitch as he hit the curb on the exit of the corner look at him he's really clambering all over the rear bumper of the race leader he just can't quite find an overlap can he to get to the inside line Blake Baldwin is a very experienced Mazda MX-5 racer and knows just how to position the car to keep a potentially quicker driver behind him Back down towards Lodge, you can see immediately James goes defensive, goes down towards the white line on driver's right, and then sweeps back to the middle of the road so as not to compromise his exit speed too much. Henderson clobbers the curb on the apex. We're already more than halfway through this race. It's flying by because the action has been non-stop, really. The fighting behind is still just as intense, I can tell you, as this lead battle is, where once again, Alan Henderson's alongside, but once again, it's the outside line into Old Hall. And time to switch back manoeuvre a bit better this time. Well, no, he can't, but James Blake Baldwin then runs out wide onto the grass, loses rear traction, and that means Henderson's right back with him when they arrive at Cascades. John Davies still in third place, but these two are now nine seconds clear of him. Liam Murphy, meanwhile, is going after Davies. In fact, he's already caught John Davies, I can tell you. And the fight for third is almost as close to the one for the lead, where again, Alan Henderson looks to the inside line into Island Bend. This time, he might just do it. He's got his nose ahead. He's got his whole car ahead. And Alan Henderson retakes the lead here at Alton Park. Race one of the day has seen this fantastic to-and-fro lead dice, but now it's Henderson who moves back to the front. So Blake Baldwin now has to do it all over again. Can he find a way back ahead of the AK Automotive driver, the man who's been dominating the championship this year, really? He's had a bit of good luck, certainly at Cadwell Park last time out. You'd have to say he was fortunate in the way that, although he only finished fourth on the road, he inherited the race win because of the drivers ahead of him being given time penalties in a race where his championship rivals may well have taken some points out of him. Henderson actually ended up extending, extending his championship lead to 40 points as it is coming into this weekend. Here is that fight for third place I was just mentioning. Meanwhile, John Davies and Liam Murphy. And then fourth place is now, by the looks of it, JJ Clements. He's got up ahead of Simon Goddard, John Greensmith, Jack Harding and James Aspinall. Back into the Cabrook corner. Liam Murphy, car number 11, the cmmotors.co.uk machine. On the attack, trying to get himself another podium finish if he can. There is James Aspinall in one of the many Paul Sheard racing cars. This is called Paul Sheard's uh, home race. Paul not racing this weekend as he has done on other occasions this year but he's here running an awful lot of cars in the championship as ever and Alton Park I know is a, a special place for him to come and race Anthony Neald who had that spin earlier on uh, it's his home race as well here at Alton Park a lot of these drivers based up in the north of the country John Davies gets sideways through Lodge Corner and Liam tries to maybe seize the opportunity and move through into third place if he can underneath the public footpath bridge over the uh, Deers Leap section of the track. Notice in the background there, James Aspinall and Jack Harding side by side. Looks like James is about to go through. He's on the inside into Old Hall. Yes, he's made the move stick. Following there, though, John Greensmith through the corner in seventh position. And Liam Murphy is now alongside John Davies into Cascades. It's the outside line. And again, you can defend quite easily around here. This is on board with John Greensmith. So what's he been up to? Up and over hilltop and I think he was struggling to get it in gear there wasn't he and he was very frustrated with it too that's how he lost two positions so he was initially ahead of JJ Clements and Simon Goddard and then that missed gear coming out of the Britain chicane has cost him both of those positions and John has to fight back again not bad though considering he started down in 15th place he's already in the fight for fifth that is the fight for fifth in front of him JJ Clements and Simon Goddard the two silver cars Goddard takes a bit of grass coming out of the shell hair from there. That car's looking very second-hand, isn't it? After receiving several love taps from drivers over the first half of the race. And things aren't really quietening down any for him now, are they? He's having to attack and defend. He's in a real Mazda sandwich heading over hilltop. 
and down towards the Hislop chicane. There's John Davies, Liam Murphy still tucked in his wheel tracks. James Aspinall's gone ahead of Jack Harding, but those two are now starting to fall adrift some way from the group in front. Jack Harding, as I said, with a new engine in that car, and we believe he's hoping to um, continue racing in the championship next year, and that would be fantastic news for one of the real up-and-coming drivers. Remember, he's taking part in the championship by virtue of the Blendini Scholarship this year, but he's certainly a potential front-runner as Simon Goddard tries to the inside into Druids, but we saw already from, James, from uh, Anthony Neild earlier on how that doesn't always work, but JJ Clemens opens the door for him because he runs wide on the grass and uh, gives the two places up anyway, so... Perhaps the pressure was starting to tell then. Simon Goddard has uh, really been applying that pressure to JJ Clements. Simon's been looking quicker as the race goes on. JJ Clements is sideways at every corner, and John Greensmith now goes past Simon Goddard. So I wonder if there's something on the, on the circuit or something, because that was very odd how the, the uh, Simon Goddard and JJ Clements cars were getting very, very out of shape all of a sudden. Further back down the order, that's Andrew Caird just in Newnham, and uh, out onto the grass. That looks like it was Will Picken who is making his debut in the championship and getting himself stuck straight into the battles. This is a group of cars fighting outside the top 10. So they are a little bit further down the order, but still the fighting, as you can see, is just as intense. Anthony Neal is in that group. Anthony, I was just talking about after his spin at Druids, is recovering. So a top 10 finish is not necessarily out of the question. Certainly could get up into 11th if we can get to the head of this group in the remaining just under a third of the race out of Cascades, down Lakeside, in towards Island Bend again. That was um, Jeff Gurrier trying to make a move at the inside of Will Picken. Following there, Anthony Neal in the number 29 car as he tries now to uh, just pick up another couple of positions. Through the shell hairpin, on board briefly there with Justin Newnham, who was very quick in the wet free practice session that we had this morning. He was fifth quickest, Justin's always good in the wet but we believe he's uh, struggling for a dry weather setup. He was doing a bit of a rain dance, I think, this morning, hoping that the whole day was going to be rain affected because then he would have been right up in the mix at the sharp end, I think. But as it is, he's uh, relegated to fighting for positions just outside the top 10. He's going to try and get to the outside of Andrew Caird here into his lops. Caird holds the middle ground into the corner. Newnham gets very, very out of shape as he turns in and clobbers the big curb. And then Andrew Caird gets even more out of shape because he gets a wheel on the grass. And he's sideways again. Andrew all over the place here. And that might have opened the door for Justin to get alongside. It has. He's alongside going over Clay Hill. It looks like he's on the outside line here. But the track is about to go to the right when he arrives at Druid's corner. And look at that. Anthony Neild, ever the opportunist, follows him through. So two places lost there by Andrew Caird by virtue of those sideways moments at his lops in Nickerbrook. And it's Justin Newnham and Anthony Neild who goes through. And now Neild is trying to take 11th place away from Justin Newnham over the yumps down towards Lodge Corner and Neil does go through oh and Caird now tries to fight back against Newnham great move that by Andrew it was a bit of a block pass and they're still side by side over the uh, crest at, Cle at uh, Deer's Leap has he managed to keep his nose alongside into Old Hall Corner is New or is Newnham going to be able to complete his defence Meanwhile, back towards the sharp end, this is the fight for third place. John Davies and Liam Murphy flashing through. Then this is still going on. Simon Goddard, JJ Clements, John Greensmith, and James Aspinall is bridging the gap to them. We've lost Jack Harding. He seems to have dropped back some way. And JJ Clements looks to the inside of Simon Goddard again, gets sideways as Goddard slams the door. And John Greensmith goes to the outside of the pair of them. That will be a great move if it works. Oh, good racing room given by JJ Clements. He could easily have squeezed John Greensmith out onto the grass, but he left him room. Greensmith's now going to have the inside side line on the entrance to the Britain chicane and moves ahead that was brilliant race graph that is just what the Master MX5 Super Cup is all about close quarters clean but aggressive racing and that was very very spectacular indeed Greensmith now signaling to JJ Clemens let's work together and try and get past Simon Goddard but it's not going to happen look because JJ wants to go back through he's on the outside into the chicane slots back in behind now though because there was no way through there and James Aspinall is now with them because they're really starting to trip each other over through Nickerbrook Corner, up and over Clay Hill. The next lap will most likely be the final lap of the race as well, which is why the um, intensity level is starting to increase slightly. Drivers realising they're running out of time to make the move stick here. Greensith has got JJ Clemens going to the inside of him into Druids. JJ's already been off here once this race, though, so he needs to just mind his P's and Q's slightly through that corner, I think. Leaders have just ticked over onto the final lap, where I can tell you the gap still is under one second between Henderson and... Um, Blake Baldwin 
James just not quite able to find a way through for the time being. And look at the run that John Greensmith's got out of Lodge Corner. He's trying to get his nose alongside Simon Goddard. Inside line for Old Hall if he can stick there. John Greensmith has a lot of experience around Alton Park. He knows that perhaps that wasn't the best way to do it. Instead, switches back to the outside, tries to carry the momentum out of the corner. Brilliant move from Johnny Greensmith, showing his years of Master MX5 racing experience to move through into third place. Fantastic stuff. Fourth place, excuse me. John Davies, of course, is in third ahead of this group. They're not going to catch him, but it is now John Greensmith who gets himself into the head of this group. Back with the leaders. I told you it was still close between Alan Henderson and James Blake Baldwin. And as they clobber the curbs through the Britain chicane, James is perhaps trying to size him up for one last-ditch attempt to go through over the rise at Hilltop, dropping down the hill towards the Hislop chicane. He's not going to be close enough here, and that really leaves him only one more opportunity, and that's going to be the final turn at Lodge Corner. But Henderson looks good through the technical parts of the circuit, doesn't he? The car's sliding around visibly less than the others, and um, James Blake Baldwin's car looks fairly stable, but just a little bit more tail-happy, perhaps, than the race leader, and that means that as they go through that particular section of the circuit, the gap increases slightly up towards Druids into the double apex right-hander then, and I think Alan Henderson might just have done enough here to hang on. There's one more corner to go. James Blake Baldwin is not close enough to be a real threat. Oh, but Simon Goddard is definitely a real threat to JJ Clements, who is also threatening Johnny Greensmith's fifth place as they head over the hill at Clay Hill, but back with the race leader and soon-to-be race winner yet again. The Alan Henderson march continues, and he takes yet another victory in the Master MX-5 Super Cup. He extends his championship lead, and Alan Henderson will be very, very happy after that one but James Blake Baldwin I think is even happier with second place that was a fantastic run from him his best result of the year so far and James Blake Baldwin will be very happy with that brand new car third position went to John Davies fourth is Liam Murphy this is the fight for fifth and JJ Clements is trying to find a way past Johnny Greensmith but it just won't work and as they come across the line Greensmith will be fifth who is going to be sixth place though it looked pretty tight actually and yes look at that Simon Goddard got back alongside uh, JJ Clements and he pipped him at the line Unbelievably, Simon Goddard is classified ahead of JJ Clements in sixth place. Clements is seventh, Aspinall eighth, ninth place for Gary Townsend because Jack Harding's dropped all the way down to tenth place. So Jack Harding has had dramas late on in that race then. And on board there with Justin Newnham, and he gets uh, pipped at the line by Carl Garnett in the number 19 car as well. So battles continuing right down to the wire, but it is Alan Henderson who takes yet another race win. You saw he also set the fastest lap of the race on the 10th and final lap of that 20-minute encounter. So great stuff from Alan. His championship lead becomes ever more secure, and it's almost getting to the stage now where you could say he's got one hand on the championship trophy. There are still several more races to go. Seven, in fact, uh, races remain in the championship. One more here at Alton Park, and then triple headers at Croft and Donington Park. But Alan is certainly looking like he's in commanding form here at Alton Park. And the winning way is set to continue, I think, over the course of the rest of the season. Second place, James Blake Baldwin. John Davies was third, as I said. Here is the official result. Henderson, Blake Baldwin, Davies, your podium. Then Murphy, Greensmith, Goddard, Clements, Aspinall, Townsend, and Jack Harding does hang on to 10th place, but uh, lost quite a lot of ground there late on. Anthony Neal recovered to 11th. Will Picken is 12th on his debut in the championship. Good stuff from him. Carl Garn at 13th. Justin Newnham, 14th. Then it's Jeff Gurrier, Andrew Caird, Rich Wickland, Michael Lawson, and Ray Worley. We lost Charlie Charm on the first lap. Alan, another win to, um, to add to your winning streak. How do you feel? Uh, over the moon. I mean, it was a hard race. James pushed us all the way. He got past at one point. Um, then I went back past him. He made a small mistake. And then we both had the same car problems towards the end. Back tyres were going going off like quite drastically. But the lap time was still there. But we were both, we were both in the same boat. So I, I knew kind of three quarters of the way through, unless I made a big mistake, that he, he probably wouldn't come back past. And it most certainly wasn't a lonely race for you. Um, what happened when he went past you? How did that happen? Uh, I got a little bit of a bad run out of Druids, I think it's called. And he, he just went up to the inside in the last corner. I didn't really fight it too much because I, I could see we had a, a fair gap. So, I, you know, it's just like I had plenty of the race left to try and get back past him. And do you think in the second race it's going to be a tough battle as this one or do you think uh, you're going to take it? Uh, I think it'll be just as hard. I mean, I'm, I'm going to try and change the car set up a bit to try and make the tyres last a bit longer, but James will do exactly the same. I mean, I'm sure we'll end up 
exactly the same. I'm sure it'll be a very interesting race. It will, yeah. James, second place on the podium. How does it feel to be back up there? Oh, it's great. Really, really nice to, uh, to give uh, Mr Henderson a battle for once. So, ah, couldn't be happier. And tell us about the car as well, because it's the first time you've drove the new car now. Yeah, um, uh, Chris Dawkins at Kent MX5 Services um, built a brand new car, um, and it was obviously really, really quick. And I've, I've had my eye on it for ages, um, and decided this is this is the time to make the move. Um, and it's been it's been great. I couldn't ask for, for more. And your car's been packing up a little bit before that, hasn't it? So this was probably a good move for you. Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, it's certainly proved that it does work for you. It's, it's working now, so um, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have, give him a good challenge in the second race. A good challenge, or are you going to slide past and get into first? I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> good luck. Thank you. John, a fantastic finish. You ended up on the podium. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. It's my first ever podium in any racing, so really pleased with that. And there was quite a competition between yourself and Liam. I mean, it was all of you, about six or seven of you to start off with, but then you and Liam took it away. Yeah, I think on the second lap, we went three abreast into the Nickerbrook chicane, and I was very close there. I wasn't sure we'd all get through cleanly. But then after that, managed to break a little gap, and Liam slowly reeled me in, and then just managed to hold him off. Um, did you think he was going to pass you at any point? Yeah, one time. we. He was right alongside me into the Cascades, luckily on the outside, so I had the entire line and was able to keep, keep ahead onto the straight after. Well, you've done brilliant, and I can't wait to see what you do in race two. Thank you very much.